This is the eHealth Radio Network, your source for health advice on demand. And now your host, Eric Michaels. Thanks for joining us once again here on the Health Radio Network. This is your host, Eric Michaels. Today on the program, we're speaking with Dr. Katrina Cox, best-selling author of The Opportunity in Cancer, How to Radically Transform Your Cancer Recovery Journey. It is an international bestseller in four countries across multiple categories. And Dr. Cox, thanks for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. You're certainly welcome. Thanks for your time. So tell us, Dr. Cox, how does one boost their energy after cancer? Let's start there. Well, there's three basic steps that I usually counsel people through, and the book goes through these in detail. But the first thing is to assess and address nutrients. A lot of times, you know, those take a back seat because we're in that fight for fighting cancer. And so things such as vitamin B12 and vitamin D need to be assessed to see where they're at and then addressed to make sure that they're in their maximum state. The second thing is to make sure that we're getting good sleep quality. Sleep is a big piece of the 21st century, and we don't always give it its due of how important it is. It's not just about how much sleep you're getting, but making sure we're getting that deep restorative sleep. And the third thing that we talk about is assessing and addressing leftover conditions. So a lot of times treatment will give us anemia, um, you know, it, sometimes there's infections that we can catch along the way. There's structural changes that we have to be able to overcome from surgeries and things like that. And so assessing and addressing those leftover conditions and making sure we have all the supports in place and not just waiting around for our body to do what it needs to do in order to, to recover from that damage, both from the surgeries and the you know treatments, as well as from the cancer itself, really helps people to figure out how to boost their energy. Thank you so much for your feedback and information there. That is helpful. And one that stuck out for me is how important sleep is. Uh, good, good to mention that. How does someone deal with anxiety and fear after cancer treatment? Yeah, that's a really tough, those are two really big categories. I mean, it's the thing that I think is the number one thing that gets in the way of people recovering their energy. And then, of course, also understanding where it comes from. The anxiety piece of this is very big because it can really affect our daily living. There are lots of my cancer recovery patients who are like, I've never had anxiety before. And now all of a sudden, I'm anxious about everything. So addressing nutrient deficiency, B vitamins, especially B6, can be a huge factor factor in allowing our physical body to overcome that anxiety. The second piece is stress. Um, You know, we talk a lot about it in the 21st century, we give a lot of lip service, but understanding where we are on a stressed scale. um, And in my book, there's a huge um, questionnaire and understanding how that impacts our daily life and how to overcome it. Because when we're in that fight or flight stages, you know, our body is constantly looking for something to be, you know, concerned about, and that adds to our anxiety. The third thing is making small daily goals. So things that we can address by finding the roots of what's going on, that fear-based piece is a lot of times people have fear of it coming back, you know, fear of what the outcomes are, all kinds of different fears are surrounding the cancer and the cancer journey, because it's such a radical change to the life that they knew. And so two things that I tell people is fear is just us holding on to something that we value. So if we can find the root of what's causing that fear, so understanding what we value. So a lot of people will say, well, I'm afraid of the cancer coming back. And so I say to them, okay, that means you've you value your health. Your health is a big deal. So let's start making small daily goals to address that health and become confident that our body and our and our health is back in our control. And that'll allow us to address those fears. And so moving through those stages of, you know, making those small goals and addressing stress and understanding the physical pieces of, it, of, of anxiety from a nutrient deficient perspective really can help tailor this individual experience of recovery. Now, another question for you, Dr. Cox, Uh, do share, if you would, how to create a plan to reduce the chances of cancer recurrence. Uh, This is something I'm sure it's already bad enough when you have been diagnosed with cancer, but the thought of getting it, uh, having it come back, talk to us about how to create a plan to reduce that from happening again. Yeah, the big piece of this is making sure your plan is individual. You know, no two people go through cancer the same. Uh, You know, it's our own genes that have 
you know, led us astray in terms of developing this cancer. So looking at addressing it from an individual perspective. And so I usually go through what we call the eight pillars of health that I, you know, talk in detail about um, in the book. But in those eight pillars, by addressing each one or finding the categories that are the ones that you should address really help to reduce your chances of reoccurrence. So looking at cell function, making sure that, you know, our cells are functioning at their highest level. So when they're turning over, they're able to turn over properly and correctly. Um, looking at our epigenetic factors. So this is a big one because these are our genes that code for how our mitochondria function and how, how and that's a fancy word for the power plants in our cells, you know, and so understanding what, you know, what nutrients we need more of or where we get those nutrients from, you know, and how our body assesses those. Understanding toxic load, which is really big after treatment and, and even cancer itself can be considered a toxic load and burden on the body. So understanding when is time to detox, when is it time to release those toxins and be able to allow the pathways to be open to do that. Understanding if there's chronic conditions that we had even previous to cancer and how they have a role to play. So infections, you know, um, and inflammation and really addressing those two in a terrain type way, you know, making sure that we're, you know, creating enough hydration for ourselves. And that could be water, that could be electrolytes, you know, those infections are making sure the immune system is on point so that it can keep those, you know, those uh, viral loads under control. And then, of course, balancing digestion is huge because a lot of times, you know, even if our cancer isn't in our digestive tract, it's affected um, by radiation, chemo, the cancer itself. And so just making sure that we're able to get the nutrients from our nutrition and address our digestion is huge. And then, of course, understanding endocrine function. This is one that gets lost a little bit, I think, um, except for maybe in breast cancer, um, you know, and, and some of those other hormone-based cancers is because endocrine function, it doesn't get remembered that it be it, that it's impacted by the cancer journey and the cancer um, treatment journey. And so those uh, are the seven. And then the last one is structural changes. So things where scar tissue is starting to build, you know, from surgeries and stuff like that makes it easier for the rest of the system to work if we're addressing and, and effectively getting our nervous system back on track and making sure all of these are individually assessed and addressed will give you that reduction in chances of reoccurrence that you're looking for. Dr. Cox, really do appreciate your visit here today. A lot of insight and important, valuable information shared. Of course, we're speaking with Dr. Katrina Cox, best-selling author of The Opportunity in Cancer, How to Radically Transform Your Cancer Recovery Journey here on ELTH Radio's Cancer Information and Health News Channels, a part of the ELTH Radio Network. Now, continuing on, how can one become a strong support for a cancer survivor? This is an interesting question because it's hard. There's no written manual. There's no way to be able to understand how to do this. And a lot of people, especially in the cancer recovery part of the journey, you know, they don't understand that they're that their loved one or their support, you know, that the person that they're supporting is what they're going through. So the first thing I tell people is make sure you get an understanding of what this part of the journey is. You know, um, I'll hear this time and time again, you know, I don't understand. And the doctor said, we're free. Let's keep moving forward. And there's a lot for the patient to process. So understanding, you know, what they're processing gives you that recognition of maybe where they're at. So you can check in with them and really understand their journey specifically. The second thing that I tell people who are trying to be the strong supporters is make sure you take care of yourself. You know, making sure that there is self-care in there, you know, totally emptying your cup does not help you help the other person. So making sure that there are small things in place and there are boundaries in place for you to be able to re reignite your own care and compassion for yourself. And then make sure that there's outside help. A lot of patients, I mean, this statistic blows me away. Only one to 2% of patients suffering post-cancer treatment actually get help or able to find help that they, that they need. And that really blows me away that we don't, aren't able to, you know, create these networks where people just walk in and they're taken care of. So, you know, if you're wanting to be that strong supporter, you know, you can't do it all, you know, understanding their journey is a great place to start, but you you might need outside help. And I really encourage you to go and find those resources that connect with the person that you're trying to take care of, um, you know, and of course, checking in if that person's ready to even ignite those, those outside helps, but definitely make sure that you're getting that outside community help that you're looking for. I really do appreciate the feedback there. And that support is so important, whether if it's within the family or within the community. Thank you so much once again, for your feedback on that. Now, looking at the positive angle on all this, how can someone 
who has cancer or has had cancer explore what the opportunity in cancer is when it's the second leading cause of death globally? Yeah, that's a, this is a thing. And one of the reasons why we named the book The Opportunity in Cancer was because, you know, it, it is an opportunity. A lot of people don't see that because they get stuck in a lot of these different parts of the journey that we were talking about. But the first thing is to, to realize that it's a traumatic experience. And when we understand that we can release, we can go through what I call the four R's. The first R is about releasing. So looking at old life habits, you know, this is an opportunity to maybe let some of those go, release some of the trauma that's happened to us, um, you know, from the cancer journey and from our life before us. If we create this, if we use cancer as an opportunity, we can create this space for us to truly recover, not only from the cancer, but also from things that have happened to us. And so that first step of releasing those, those old habits and that old parts of life that don't serve us anymore is really important. The second piece is to reclaim our mind, right? And so we have a lot of self-talk. We have a lot of, uh, you know, influences um, from outside sources. And so reclaiming those narratives, you know, making sure our mind is on that health journey and health track, uh, you know, and addressing and understanding the gifts that we have now, the things that we're, we are able to say, wow, I wouldn't have gotten that if I, if I wasn't here. So Reclaiming our mind is a big thing. The third piece is rebuilding our bodies. You know, it's New Year's right now. And I think to myself, you know, we always, lots of people make resolutions and, you know, health tends to be the top one of those. But every day is an opportunity to rebuild our bodies. After a cancer recovery journey, you know, if you give yourself the space and time and, and really drill down into what your body needs, you can actually see more clearly where you need to go and where you need to start. And that's one of the reasons why rebuilding our bodies is, is, is actually an opportunity at this point. And the last piece is to renew ourselves our lives, listening to ourselves, you know, there can be a lot of clarity that comes if we do these steps of releasing, reclaiming, rebuilding. Once we get to that renew, it's a long journey, but we can get new perspectives on what serves us, what's important to us. And we can also understand a little bit more about our trauma in our life, not just from cancer, but from other parts of it. We can understand our triggers. And if we get that clarity, we can really renew ourselves and life can be really, really sweet. Um, you know, in that place, because it's just another step, especially when we're in that cancer recovery space. So that's where I go with the opportunity within cancer is giving us that opportunity to go through those four R's and really dig down into who we are and get to know ourselves and, and be able to rebuild ourselves. Once again, Dr. Cox, thanks for your visit with us here today and for making the effort to write the book, The Opportunity in Cancer. Where can listeners get more information on the book as well as best pick up the book as well? Yeah, so the opportunityincancer.com is the website. You can get the book. You can read all about the book there. Um, it has a sister page that goes to cancerremissionmission.com, and that's about me and my mission to help people who are in cancer remission connect with the community, and that's where you can actually connect with me. So the opportunityincancer.com is the website for the book itself. Um, and then, of course, the cancerremissionmission.com is where you can go to connect with me and connect with the community of, uh, you know, remission patients that really want to um, connect in that community on a, on a bigger scale. Once again, we really do appreciate that and a host of resources as well. Again, folks, it is the opportunityincancer.com. Dr. Cox, all the best. And thanks for joining us here today. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, You're more than welcome anytime. We've been speaking with Dr. Katrina Cox, best-selling author of The Opportunity in Cancer, How to Radically Transform Your Cancer Recovery Journey. And for all the details, visit theopportunityincancer.com. And again, this has been your host, Eric Michaels, and we do thank you for your continued support of the eHealth Radio Network. Join us again soon for another episode that will help further expand your knowledge on those things that are important to your health and wellness. For more eHealth Radio reports, we invite you to visit our main radio channel site at eHealthRadioNetwork.com. And as always, we do thank you for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to the eHealth Radio Network. For more information or to subscribe to this podcast, visit eHealthRadioNetwork.com. 